Uh, there are some uh, interesting challenges in threshold learning in the filtering problem. Uh, so here I show the historical data that you can collect in, in a filtering system. So you can see the scores and uh, the status of uh, relevance. So the first one has a score of 36.5 and it's relevant. The second one uh, is non-relevant, uh, etc. Of course, we have a lot of documents for which we don't know the status because we have never delivered them to the user. So as you can see here, we only see the judgments of uh, documents delivered uh, to the user. So this is not a random sample. So it's a sensitive data. It's kind of biased. So that creates some uh, difficulty for learning. And uh, secondly, there are in general very little labeled data and uh, very few relevant data. So it's, it, it's also challenging for machine learning approaches. Typically, uh, they require, uh, require more training data. And in the extreme case, at the beginning, we don't even have any uh, labeled data, so well, the system still has to make a decision. So that's a very difficult problem at the beginning. Finally, there is also this issue of exploration versus exploitation trade-off. Now, this uh, means uh, we uh, also want to explore the document space a little bit and to, to see if the uh, user might be interested in documents that uh, we haven't delivered. So, in other words, we're going to explore the space of user interests by testing whether the user might be interested in some other documents that uh, uh, currently uh, are not matching the user's interest so well. So how do we do that? Well, we could lower the threshold a little bit and to just uh, uh, deliver some near misses to the user to see what the user would respond um, to see how the user uh, would respond to this uh, extra document and this is a trade-off because uh, on the one hand you want to explore but on the other hand you don't want to really explore too much because then you would over deliver non-relevant information so exploitation means you would uh, exploit what you learn about the user. Let's say you know the user is interested in this particular topic. So you don't want to deviate that much. And, but then if you don't deviate at all, then you don't explore at all. That's also not good. You might miss opportunity to learn uh, another interest of the user. So this is a dilemma. And that's also a difficult uh, problem to solve. Now, how do we solve these problems? In general, I think one can use the empirical utility optimization strategy. And this strategy is basically to optimize the threshold based on uh, historical data, just as you have seen on the previous slide. Right? So you can just compute the utility on the training data for each candidate score threshold. Pretend that what if I cut at this point? What if I cut at, cut at the different scoring um, threshold point? What would happen? What's the uh, utility? Since these are training data, we can kind of uh, compute the utility, right? And we know their relevance status, or we assume that we know the relevance status, let's say, based on approximation of click-throughs, right? So then we can just choose the threshold that gives the maximum utility on the training data. Now, uh, but uh, this, of course, doesn't account for exploration um, that we just talked about. Uh, and we, there is also the difficulty of bias training sample, as we mentioned. So in general, we can only get the upper bound of, for the true optimal threshold, because the, 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 the threshold uh, might be actually lower than this. So it's possible that the discarded item might be actually interesting to the user. So how do we solve this problem? Well, we generally, as I said, we can lower the threshold to explore a little bit. So here's one particular approach called a beta gamma threshold learning. So the, the idea is following. So here I show um, a ranked list of all the training documents that we have seen so far. And they are ranked by their positions. And on the y-axis, we show the utility. Of course, this function depends on how you specify the coefficients in the utility function. But we can then imagine, uh, depending on the cutoff position, we will have a utility. That means, uh, suppose I cut at this position and that would be the utility. So we can, for example, identify some cutting cutoff point. Uh, the optimal point, theta optimal, uh, 
is the point uh, when we would achieve the maximum utility if we had chosen this threshold. Right? And there is also zero uh, threshold, zero utility threshold. And you can see at this cutoff, uh, the utility is zero. Now, what does that mean? That means if I lower the threshold a little bit, and now I, uh, I reach this threshold, the utility would be lower, but it's still uh, positive, uh, it's still uh, non-negative at least, right? So it's not as high as the optimal utility, but it gives us a, a, a safe point to explore the threshold. As I just explained, it's desirable to explore the uh, interest space. So it's desirable to lower the threshold based on your training data. So that means in general, we want to set the threshold somewhere in this range. Let's say we can use alpha to control the, um, the, the deviation from the optimal um, utility point. So you can see the formula of the threshold will be just the interpolation of the uh, zero utility threshold and the optimal utility threshold. Now the question is, how, how should we set alpha? You know, um, and when should we deviate more from the optimal utility point? Well, this can depend on multiple factors. And the one way to solve the problem is to encourage uh, this uh, threshold mechanism to explore up to the zero um, point. And that's a safe point. But we're not going to necessarily reach all the way to the uh, zero point. But rather, uh, we're going to use other parameters uh, to further define alpha. And this specifically is as follows. So there will be a, a beta parameter to control uh, the deviation from the optimal threshold. And this can be based on, for, uh, can be accounting for uh, the overfitting to the training data, let's say. And, and so this can be just an adjustment factor. But what's more interesting is this gamma parameter here. And you can see in this um, formula, uh, gamma is controlling uh, the, uh, the inference of uh, the number of examples in training data set. So you can see in this formula as n, which denotes the number of training examples uh, becomes bigger, then it would uh, actually uh, encourage less uh, exploration. In other words, when n is very small, it would try to explore more. And that just means uh, if we have seen few examples, we're not sure whether we have exhausted the space of interests, so we would explore. But as we have seen many examples from the user, many data points, then we feel that we probably don't have to explore more. So this gives us a dynamic strategy for exploration. Right? The more examples we have seen, the less exploration we're going to do. So the threshold will be closer to the optimal uh, threshold. So that's the basic idea of this approach. Now this approach actually uh, has been working well in some evaluation studies, empirically effective, and also uh, can work on arbitrary utility with a, a appropriate lower bound. Right? And it explicitly addresses the exploration exploitation trade-off. And it kind of uses the zero uh, utility threshold point as a, a safeguard for um, exploration and exploiting trade-off. We're not never going to uh, explore further than the zero utility point. So if you take the analogy of gambling and you, you don't want to risk on losing money, um, you, so it's a safe strategy, it's a conservative strategy for exploration. And the problem is, of course, this approach is purely heuristic and the zero utility lower bound is also often too uh, conservative. And there are, of course, uh, more advanced machine learning approaches that have been proposed uh, for solving these problems. And this is the uh, active uh, research area. So to summarize, um, there are two strategies um, for recommended systems or filtering uh, systems. One is content-based, which is looking at the item similarity. And the other is collaborative filtering, uh, which is looking at the user similarity. Uh, in this lecture, we've covered the content-based uh, filtering approach. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about the collaborative filtering. In content-based filtering system, uh, we generally uh, have to solve 
uh, several problems related to filtering decision and learning, etc. And such a system can actually be built based on a search engine system by adding a threshold mechanism and adding an adaptive learning algorithm to allow the system to learn from long-term uh, feedback uh, from the user.